I recently caught an episode of some Gordon Ramsay cooking show on the Idiot Box. A group of 20 to 30-something women were sitting around a table having some sort of celebration. They were all donned in sparkly attire, wearing colorful matching hats, sporadically chanting, Wee! for no apparent reason. Every woman at the table must have been having a hell of a time. They were all grinning from ear to ear and giddily squirming in their chairs like they had to pee. To put a finer point on it, it looked exactly like a table full of children. So much so, in fact, that I would have not at all been surprised if Mommy had showed up at the table with cartons of milk for all of them. Their dress, their behavior, their mannerisms, and their talk, down to every chirpy neotenic, yay, could have been easily issued from a table of first graders. And it reminded me, for a disturbingly vivid moment, of what I've known for a long, long time. When it comes to grown women, we largely don't have any. What we have on the female side of the sociosexual fence isn't women. I can't even say that they're just women who fail to fully mature. What they do on the emotional and psychological front is fail to mature at all. They are quite literally children, toddlers with driver's licenses and the ability to enter contracts. Before I go on, I need to take a moment for a disclaimer and to qualify what I'm talking about. The psychological, behavioral, and personality characteristics we find in both sexes don't happen in a vacuum. We can't point at the shortcomings of one sex like the other isn't an integral part of the picture. We'll have asshole alpha type men as long as women keep demanding asshole alpha type men. We will have women permanently stuck as developmental toddlers as long as we have men enabling and encouraging it. So to say that all women are children has to be considered against the reality that we have legions of men working tirelessly to ensure that those women stay that way. Some of the main criticisms of women are consistent and predictable. They lack accountability. They thrive on unfair double standards. Indeed, they feel entitled to them. They emotionally manipulate using tears and hurt feelings to hear yes instead of no. When that doesn't work, they use punishment, often in the form of shaming, to get their way. In other words, if mama ain't happy, Ain't nobody happy. They excuse all sorts of outrageous, abusive conduct, religiously blaming the victims of their mistreatment if they dare to object. They are irrational, callously indifferent creatures demanding love that is sacrificial. They constantly test to make sure that they are the sole and unquestioned beneficiary to a man's love and his labor. They are, in essence, children and poorly disciplined, spoiled ones at that. It is easy to understand how things got this way, with parents, primarily fathers, buying into romantic notions about women. They turn their daughters not into adults, but into daddy's little girl. A little princess with a rhinestone tiara makes a cute picture at six. She makes a high-maintenance nightmare at 26. As a matter of fact, once you come to understand the raising and socializing of most women, even that rhinestone-laden six-year-old doesn't seem so cute anymore. She just looks like what she is, a train wreck in waiting for some ignorant dupe who thinks his role in life is to nurture her inner princess till she has enough crow's feet to make a flock. You can see the results of this in the scores of 40-something women living alone with a cat or four, depressed and bewildered about why Prince Charming, the guy with no other need in life save making her happy, never showed up. Where have all the good men gone is their mantra, even though they couldn't bear the honest answer to that question, 
which is why they have to keep asking it. So yeah, when you want to understand why so many women are just completely insufferable, the first place to look is at their parents, especially their fathers. Not that fathers are the only source of this conundrum. It's no coincidence that at the same time your average woman starts to mature sexually, an endless line forms in front of her filled with young men ready to put their necks and their balls on a chopping block for a shred of her attention. Of course, that line of clones is not the one from which she selects men for sex. It is usually the guys who won't get in the line, who realize that average men doing their average best to capture her heart by balancing a beach ball on their nose are also the ones who end up filling PUA forums in an effort to figure out why they can't get laid. But of course, the masses never learn that. Women do learn, though. They learn that men, by and large, are trained seals who will sell their souls and savage each other for a morsel of a woman's approval. And women see this reflected around them all the time. They live in a world where their importance in everything from cancer research to seats on a subway is elevated to destructively psychotic proportions. The world in which they live is one that teaches them in every way possible that girls rule and boys drool. Are we really going to be foolish enough to believe that the character of the women we encounter is just innate to women? That men are just hapless, defenseless victims taken advantage of by women who are just sinister and who got that way without any social conditioning? I've heard this one from some men. I've even seen that kind of sentiment posted in the comments to my videos on a regular basis. To be frank, I think that idea comes mainly from men who suffer from a similar lack of accountability as the average woman. These are guys who ignore every red flag a woman waves. And let's face it, women behave like children so automatically and so casually that it doesn't take a brain surgeon to see it. Matter of fact, women's behavioral neoteny is so overt that you literally have to be trying not to see it in order to miss it. Your thinking has to be as magical as any tiara-wearing, stuffed animal-clutching 30-year-old woman child going through angst because she can't figure out why no one takes her seriously. So it appears to me that the facts here are indisputable. Our society, with the deep complicity of men who inhabit it, produces an insufferable personality profile in women. We turn girls into princesses and princesses into abusive, entitled bitches. If I were the average man, I would not gloat about my superiority to women. Somehow, I don't think that training half of humanity to ruin the other half comes with bragging rights. And even though red pill men are largely ones who have terminated their employment at the cunt factory, they are still left with some hard decisions when it comes to women. Sure enough, MGTOW monks will just shine all this on. They don't mess around with women, so they don't have to worry about changing women's emotional diapers. And you know what? They are 100% correct. If you don't give women the time of day, pair bonding wise, you have little to nothing to worry about when it comes to dealing with women's completely unrealistic and unattainable goals with men. Now, the other 99.9% .9 of men, the ones who will pair bond, still face challenges. How do you cope with Princess Potty when you wake up one day and find her sleeping next to you? One suggestion I have is the honeymoon approach. On average, and I admit this is not very scientific, people are on their best behavior for about 90 days in a new relationship. This is the one period in a woman's life that she is most likely to resemble an accountable adult. She will be invested in compromise and will even be rational in a lot of ways. Enjoy that time, guys. Swim in it. And after the three months is up or whatever amount of time she is geared for, get ready to ditch her. 
there will be obvious tells when the time comes. She will simply start acting like she really is, a four-year-old with pubic hair. So you kick her to the curb and call next. There's no shame in it. In fact, in these times, it's a pretty damned healthy way to view relationships with women, provided you're smart enough to pick one who won't ruin your life in the first 90 days. Still, there are men, lots of them I wager, who don't want to cycle through a different relationship every time the season changes. They want the relative comfort of the familiar for a longer period of time. They may even want something permanent. Again, I'm not here to make any judgment on this. This is the path a lot of men want, and since no one elected me Pope of what men should do, all I can do is offer suggestions supporting their chosen path. So, my advice to men who want a permanent relationship is pretty simple. One, don't get married and don't cohabitate in a way that results in the law deciding you are married. You don't need to invite the state into your life to have a long-term relationship. Once that is out of the way, then lock your mind onto one simple, unavoidable reality. When it comes to long-term relationships with women, you are either going to endure a child and sell yourself out completely trying to please it, or you're going to have to turn that child into a grown woman. This isn't negotiable. As a man, you either train or get trained. That choice is up to you. If you choose the former, it's easy. Just get on your knees and stay there. If you choose the latter, it's a lot more complicated. Part of the complication is that it won't be your objective to have her be the one on her knees. Well, not in the sense of the power dynamic of the relationship. If your relationship need involves a woman who lives on her knees, then I have no advice to give you. On the other hand, if you're looking for something equitable, your work will involve almost chronic amounts of conflict. You, perhaps for years, will be the only adult in the room, literally taking a paternal role to teach her what her own father wouldn't. It's a huge ask that a lot of men won't do and the chances are probably not good that she will have the fortitude to grow up emotionally so many years after she grew up physically. But that, I argue, is still the average man's only viable path to a good ending in a long-term relationship. Well, there are the alleged unicorns out there, and I'm sure someone in the comments has one and will tell us about it. But being more down to earth, it's up to you if the reward is worth the effort or the risk. It is not up to you, however, if the effort and the risk will be part of it. They will be, and you're better off not kidding yourself about it. Your efforts to turn a woman child into a viable grown partner in life can turn into death by a thousand cuts. And at the very least, it will mean a thousand rounds of sticking hard by your values, defending your boundaries till you get tired of defending your boundaries and being willing every minute of every day to watch her walk out the door with you holding it open for her. As always, what you do is up to you. And of course, I could be wrong about all of this. If you think I am, feel free to tell me about it in the comments. That's it for today, guys. As always, I hope you've enjoyed and see you next time.